problem. The next question is describe what vanishing gradient problem is and its impact on neural networks. So vanishing gradients happens when the gradients of a network, so loss functions with respect to the model parameters such as weights and the bias parameters, they become very small. And in some cases, they become entirely close to zero, which means they start to vanish as they propagate back through very deep layers to the earlier layers. And the result of this vanishing gradient is that the network is no longer able to learn dependencies in the data effectively, and uh, the model is no longer able to update the model effectively, which means that the algorithm will end up not being optimized, and we will end up with a model that is unable and was not able to learn the actual dependencies in the data. Of course, that's something that we want to avoid. And we want to have a proper amount of gradients that we will use as part of the optimization algorithms like GD in order to obtain the model parameters and then do this iteratively and continuously such that we will end up minimizing our loss function. And our model will be at a state that it will provide highly accurate predictions. So how do we get this vanishing gradient problem? And what is the reason of that? So as part of training of a neural network, we saw that in each training iteration, as part of the gradient descent algorithm, for instance, we would be using the entire training data to train our network and then perform these different transformations from very earlier layers to up until the last output layer to take the activations and then multiplying it with the weight matrix and then adding the bias parameters, compute the z-scores in this way, and then apply the activation function in order to activate those neurons. And then after this is done, in that specific hidden layer, the network is able to learn those different dependencies in the data and then learn the structure and then move on, on to the next layer and then to the next layer up until reaching the output layer. And then when we have our output layer, we then are able to calculate our predictions, so y hat. And then we are able to compare the y hat to the true labels or true values, and then understand what is this loss function? What is the average error that the model is making with this set of parameters? And then we are performing the back propagation to compute the gradients, then supplying it to the optimization algorithm in order to update the model parameters. And the way the optimization algorithm is doing, it is uh, opposite of the forward pass. So it is computing and taking the gradients, computing the corresponding updates, and then updating the weights and the bias factors from deep layers to the earlier layers. And the problem with this is that we are performing all these transformations and then we are cumulatively every time multiplying those values. What this means is that in some cases, especially when we have deep network, when we have many hidden layers, by the time the network approaches from deep layers, the middle layers, and then earlier layers, this after this multiplication of many of these weights and this gradient start to become very close to zero. When the gradients become very close to zero, it means that we have nothing then to update our weights and update our bias parameters. When we can no longer update our weights in our model, it means that the network uh, is no longer able to properly learn, especially from the earlier layers when the gradient is vanishing. And this is then a problem because we want our model to continuously learn and continuously update those weights such that we will end up with the best set of parameters for the weights and the bias factors in order to uh, minimize the loss function and then provide highly accurate predictions. Therefore, ideally, we want to ensure that those gradients do not vanish, so we combat the vanishing gradient problem, and our network is able to properly learn and understand these uh, dependencies in our data, independent whether it's in the deep layers or in the earlier layers. So when it comes to description of this problem, try to focus on the weights because that's the biggest challenge when the gradients of the weights start to vanish, especially for earlier layers in a deep neural network. And that's something we want to avoid because then the model in case of vanishing gradients problem is, no, is not able to effectively learn. Another important thing that uh, you can mention as part of your answer is that uh, there are certain architectures that inherently are subject to this problem. 
And those are especially the RNN, so recurrent neural networks, as well as LSTMs, GRUs, which are all inherently deep in their nature. Because unlike the original neural networks, like artificial neural networks that have a single input layer, they provide the input and then the neurons are being activated and they provide a single output. And the hidden layers, they are not interconnected. So they are not like the RNNs that take the input and then for each input, they provide the corresponding output. And then this hidden layer uh, and the hidden unit is then being used as part of the next step and the next step. So they are not sequential based like RNNs, then they are less likely to, to be prone to this uh, vanishing gradient problem than the RNNs or uh, because RNNs TMs and other sequence type of neural networks, they are inherently uh, deep, which means that they have this multiple layers uh, based on the amount of time steps that they have, which then makes uh, these algorithms more prone to the vanishing gradient problem.